Hello friends, it's Christy Marcott. In today's video, I'll be using Spellbinder's Envelope of Wonder Collection. Here's a look at all of the items that are included in Spellbinder's Envelope of Wonder Collection. There are four different die sets, a sentiment stamp set, and also a sentiment set for their better press system. I selected three of the die sets to use and also the sentiment stamp set. I have the original Envelope of Wonder, Christmas Wonder, and also Autumn Wonder. Here's a look at the sentiment set. Lots of fun sentiments that you can use throughout the year. To make the cute envelope, you will need the original Envelope of Wonder die set. It's the largest set. I have all of the dies for the envelope on the left side, and the set also includes lots of floral and foliage pieces. Now the envelope is fairly large. I'm holding up an A2 size card base, so you can see the open envelope is taller and wider. If you use the envelope die to make a card, it would not fit inside an A2 size envelope. So you would need a slightly larger size. The set also includes a tag and most of the sentiments fit inside the tag. The next set, and this is my favorite set, this is called Autumn Wonder. It includes 24 dies. I love making fall cards and this set has lots of fun fall foliage pieces. The last set is called Christmas Wonder. There are 26 dies, lots of fun Christmas and holiday images. There's also a Halloween Wonder set. I decided not to get it. If you like all four of the die sets, Spellbinders does have a bundle deal. And I will have links for the entire collection in the description box below. For my first card, I'll be assembling the envelope. I cut it out of craft cardstock. For the little edge piece, be the glue area on the envelope, I'm using some pattern paper from Honeybee Stamps. It's part of their Pinstripes and Polka Dots Outdoors collection. To assemble the envelope, you'll need one background piece, two of the sides, and one of the bottom flap. All of the pieces have scored lines when you cut them out, so they're easy to fold. I did use a bone folder to get a nice flat crease, since the craft cardstock I'm using is a heavier weight. To adhere the two sides and the bottom flap, I'm putting some double-sided adhesive tape on that small folded area. I'll remove the release paper, and just to make sure it stays in place, I'm also adding a little bit of Barely Art glue. The double-sided adhesive tape is very sticky, but for projects like this, it doesn't always hold completely, so I like to also add a little bit of glue. I'll first add the right and left side, then finally the flap on the bottom. To hold all of those together, I'll put just a little bit of glue along the inside edge of the two side flaps. I'll place an acrylic block on top for some added weight while the glue dries. I've mentioned it for several months that I wanted a larger acrylic block, and I finally went and purchased one, and it's the perfect size. It's basically a full A2 size. And I'll add a link in the description box if you're also looking for a larger acrylic block. I've already gone ahead and cut out lots of the fall foliage pieces. There are a few images with several die cut pieces that you'll assemble together. One of the mushrooms and also the acorn. And I didn't use all of the images on the Autumn Wonder set. The envelope die is really fun, but if you're not interested in the envelope, the dies are still great to have. The fall, Christmas, and Halloween sets include so many fun images that you could use without the envelope. And in my video, I'll be using this set three different ways. This first card, I couldn't resist filling up an envelope with lots of pretty fall foliage pieces. Once I have the two acorns and mushrooms assembled, it's time to fill up the envelope. And I did speed up this portion quite a bit as I'm adding one image after another inside the envelope. And this part was actually really fun. I'm trying to mix and match the different images and colors. 
trying to get a nice balanced look inside the envelope. Most of the images I'm using Barely Art Glue and adhering them on the inside of the envelope. For some of the images, I will put some thin foam dimension on the back, just on the upper area, and glue on the bottom. For the die cut pieces, I used an assortment of cardstock from scrapbook.com's smooth cardstock paper pads. One of the foliage pieces I cut out of gold shimmer cardstock, and I believe that foliage piece is actually from the original envelope of Wonder die set. It's fun that you can mix and match the different die sets together. The Christmas Wonder set has a little bow, and that would look cute on some of the fall foliage pieces. I have just a few more pieces to add. Some of the longer foliage pieces, I'm tearing off the bottom leaves. I'll be tucking them inside the envelope so that area won't be visible. Once I've filled up the envelope with lots of fall foliage pieces, the bottom and side flaps do stick up just a little bit. And to help keep those down, I'm adding some foam squares just on the inside of the bottom and side flaps. For a little extra detail, I'm using some gold watercolor paint and adding a lovely splatter all over the foliage and envelope using one of the lighter gold colors. Once I take the envelope out of my makeshift splatter box, you'll see the beautiful gold splatter detail. For a sentiment, I'm adding just a note to say hello, and I've already stamped it on the tag die cut. There's also a die that cuts out this super narrow strip, and you can thread this through the end of the tag to look like some twine. I'll put a small drop of glue to hold the die cut twine piece in place, then I'll flip over the tag, put thin foam dimension on the back. I'm using Honeybee Stamps white foam strips. I cut a teeny tiny piece and I was trying to fit it on the very end of the tag, but it was still too big, so I left that off. I'll remove the release paper and add my sentiment tag at the bottom of the envelope. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. And you could use this as a card. If you flip it over, there's lots of space on the back to add a message. I love how this turned out with all the beautiful fall foliage pieces poking out of the envelope. Now moving on to card design number two. And I won't be using the envelope this time. For the background of my card, I'm using some plaid pattern paper. And this is from Doodlebug Designs, I think Pumpkin Spice Collection. I cut out two label die cuts from Spellbinders. This is their label 17 set. I think it may be a retired set. I'll adhere the two layers together, put glue on the back, and add the label die cut onto my card. I'll layer the background on some light brown cardstock, put ATG tape on the back, and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. This is an American Standard A2 size card, five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. This card will feature three images from the Autumn Wonder set. I have a pumpkin, some squash, and an acorn. I'll assemble the acorn first. I used a reddish brown cardstock for the main part of the acorn, dark brown cardstock for the top, and on the left side, there's the little highlight section. Instead of inlaying that portion, I'm adding a piece of light peach cardstock on the back side. For the pumpkin, there are three pieces. I use orange cardstock for the pumpkin, green cardstock for the little twirly vine piece, and brown cardstock for the stem. And for the squash, I use some yellowish orange cardstock and light green cardstock for the stem. Once I have all three of the images assembled, I'll flip them over, put thin foam dimension on the back, I'll remove the release paper and add all three images inside the label die cut. I'll put the tall squash in the middle, the pumpkin on the left, and the acorn on the right. For a sentiment, I'll be stamping it directly onto the card, so I am using my mini Misty. The ink color is Dark Chocolate by Scrapbook.com. The sentiment is sending birthday wishes. To finish off the card, I'll add some gold gem stickers. These are from Spellbinders. I'll put two in the upper right-hand corner, 
three in the lower left hand corner, one on the right side of the acorn and one next to the tall squash. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. This will be the perfect card for a fall birthday and I love that it's gender neutral. Now moving on to card design number three. The pattern paper is from scrapbook.com's Christmas collection. I've already gone ahead and assembled the envelope and I used two different pattern papers from the Christmas collection. For this card, I will be closing the envelope and you're able to do it by tucking the flap in the cutout slit. The inside of the envelope features some fun pattern paper with Christmas presents and I don't want to cover all of that up. So instead I'm making a little note to tuck inside the envelope and that's where I'll add the sentiment and some of the Christmas images. I've already assembled a gingerbread man cookie. I put double sided adhesive tape behind the eyes and the buttons and I inlaid those tiny pieces. Remove the release paper, put glue on the back and adhere the gingerbread man on the top portion of the little note. I placed an acrylic block on top for some added weight while the glue dries. Now I'll assemble a present. I used some of the peach colored pattern paper for the main box and some red pattern paper for the bow. I'll add the ribbon down first and there are three pieces for the bow. The final image I'm adding is a peppermint candy. For the wrapper I used some pearlescent vellum. The background piece of the candy, I have some white cardstock and red pattern paper for the red swirl. I'll adhere all three of those pieces together and add the peppermint candy on the left side of the gingerbread man. The sentiment is from Spellbinder's Peace and Joy stamp set. This is Have a Magical Christmas. I've already stamped out the sentiment. I'll cut a fishtail on the right and left side. Put glue on the back and adhere the sentiment underneath the three Christmas images. So there's the little note I can tuck inside the envelope. You could put some solid cardstock on the back of the note and add a little message. And there's even room inside the envelope to add a gift card. For a little extra detail on the back of the envelope, I'll be adding a wax seal. I have Spellbinder's Wax Seal Starter Kit. It includes the silicone mat, the furnace, and the melting spoon. The wax bead color is Classic Crimson. This is one of Spellbinder's new wax colors and it's perfect for Christmas cards. I'll pull out my Spellbinder storage box where I keep the handle and also the brass stamper pieces. I selected the stamper with the sentiment Merry Christmas. I've already added five of the wax beads in my melting spoon. After the wax has been melting for a few minutes, I'll use a toothpick, stir the wax to make sure everything is melted. Then I'll pour it out onto the silicone mat, place the brass stamper on top, let that sit for about 15, 20 seconds. Once it's cool, you can easily remove the brass stamper and pull up your finished wax seal. To help the sentiment stand out, I'm using a gold paint marker, lightly brushing it over the raised area. So the sentiment, Merry Christmas, and underneath the sentiment, there's a little holly branch. This is an easy way to add some lovely detail to your wax seals. Since this is a paint marker, be sure to let it sit for a few minutes until the paint dries. Using the Christmas Wonder Set, I also cut out two holly leaves from some pattern paper and I'll be adhering them on the flap of the envelope. Put glue on the back, add one leaf on the left side and the other one underneath. To adhere the wax seal, I'm using Spellbinder's Wax Seal Stamp Adhesive Circles. These are super sticky and it's the perfect way to adhere your pre-made wax seals. You can also pour the wax directly onto the paper, but I tend to make a big mess, so I prefer to do them separately and then adhere them using the adhesive circles. When adhering the wax seal, I made sure to leave enough space so I can still tuck the flap of the envelope into the little slot on the back. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. 
Now here's another look at the six cards I made using Spellbinder's brand new Envelope of Wonder collection. This is a really fun collection. You can use lots of the die cut images or just a few on your project. The envelope filled with all the fall foliage pieces is my favorite. If you are interested in the Envelope of Wonder collection or any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.